1. This story is based in Ireland. Back in early 2010, I moved out from home for college. I moved into a large three-story terraced house in the center of the city. I lived with five other girls, who usually used to go back to their family homes on the weekends. I was often left completely alone at the weekends, and I dreaded it. Being alone didn't bother me, but the problem was, I wasn't completely alone. Nothing unusual happened for the first few weeks, when I had moved into the house that I noticed. I loved my new room, it was spacious and had a French door, with heavy velvet curtains that draped either side of it. It had a double bed that was pushed against the right wall of my bedroom, so only one side of the bed was open to the room. My room was on the third floor of the house, and the only room to have a balcony. The balcony faced towards a courtyard of sorts, there were no other balconies or roofs near my balcony, so no one could access it unless they were in my room, which made me feel safe. Around mid-October, I had been living in the house for a few weeks now, it was comfortable, I knew the house next door that was connected to the right side of my bedroom wall was vacant. But I started to hear scraping from inside the wall. I put it down to there being rats or mice next door. The houses were very old and were close to a river too, so it made sense. This scraping sound would go on for ages at night and first thing in the morning. It bothered me so much I had tried to record it, but my phone never picked it up. How normal, right? I used to sleep in my bed facing the wall, so there was technically space for another person beside me. One night I woke up abruptly after being punched in the shoulder, hard. I got such a fright that it didn't register what had happened. I turned on the light on my phone, because it's the only one I had close to me, and started shining around the room. But no one was there. I always kept my bedroom door locked with a sliding bolt from the inside, because there were always people on the go in the house, and sometimes my housemates had friends over. So it would be impossible for someone to get in. I thought that I had imagined it, and fell back asleep for a few minutes. The next night the same thing happened again, but when I woke up, and turned my flashlight on and looked around my room, no one or nothing was there. So I tried to go back to sleep. As soon as I turned my back to the room, it happened, and I was still awake. I got punched in the back as I was awake, and I felt it as clear as day. I lay paralyzed with fear in the bed. It was then that I felt the icy cold of the bedroom. Not the usual winter cold that you can feel in a room when it gets a little chilly. This was ice cold, where you could see your breath. I mustered every ounce of courage I had in me to turn back around with my flashlight and check the room corner to corner, but nothing was there. I got up and turned the light on and slept with the light on for the rest of the night. Same thing the next morning. The scratching continued on the wall next to my bed. I met one of my roommates who stayed in a bedroom across the hall from me coming out of her room. We chatted and walked together downstairs to get some breakfast. At this point, I had told no one what was happening to me. Because I was so scared they would think I was either lying or a complete freak, and I really wanted to make friends with the girls that I lived with. My roommate was visibly spooked as she went about her business in the kitchen. I asked if she was okay and she told me what happened, but laughing to herself, as if we'd both think she'd gone mad. She said that last night she was wide awake in bed, reading a book, when her phone started moving by itself up and down a shelf in her bedroom. She said it wasn't vibrating, causing it to move, it was being dragged. She proceeded to tell me that she had been having sleep paralysis nightmares since she moved in, where an old hag was sitting in the corner of her room, and slowly crawling onto her legs and up her body so she couldn't move. This was happening to her every night. I decided to share with her what was happening in me too. We both silently accepted the reality of our situation. We decided not to tell the other girls because we didn't want to freak them out, and surely they would tell us if anything was happening to them. That night I came up with a plan, to lie on the left side of my bed with clothes as a barrier so nothing could reach me. In my head this made sense, but yeah, it absolutely did not work. The same thing happened again, I was punched in my shoulder, and the more I tried to ignore it, the harder it got. I had a mark in my shoulder from the punch. 
I repeated the same thing again where I used my phone's flashlight to check out my room before turning on the light to go asleep. The next night, I decided to sleep on my back. I woke up at 3 or 4 in the morning to my balcony door wide open and the cold November rain coming into my room. My balcony was locked from a key inside the house and it was now wide open. I leapt out of bed to close the door and got saturated in the process. Now I was mad. Scaring me is one thing, but attempting to give me pneumonia is another. This happened a few more nights in a row. I made sure to check the door was locked before going to bed, and went as far as to put the key under my pillow as I slept. It didn't make a difference. As the weeks went on, I started to experience the extreme sleep paralysis. I can't tell you if it was from the continuous nights of interrupted sleep or something otherworldly, but it was awful. My sleep paralysis was different from my roommates. I would be wide awake looking around my room, body paralyzed and a black mist lingering but never getting close to me. As the year neared December, I felt relief that I would be going home to my family for a few weeks for Christmas. On one of the last nights before Christmas break, I lay in bed watching a TV show on my laptop. It was still not late, only around 8pm. I started to hear thundering footsteps on the stairs outside my room. Thinking it was my housemates, I popped my head out to check. No one was there. I went across the hall to their bedrooms to ask if they had heard it or if it had been them. They said no. They had not heard it. I told the housemate who was having similar experiences that I would text them again if it happened. I was not back in my room two minutes when there it was again. It was coming from the stairs in front of my bedroom from within the house. I texted my housemate and she didn't hear a thing. I knew I was in for it tonight. This was all happening with every light in the house turned on, by the way. I was too afraid to walk around in the dark, understandably. I tried to relax back into watching my TV show when the heavy velvet curtains were pulled closed across my balcony door, starting to gently rock. There were no windows open in the house for a breeze that could be passing through. I texted my housemate and told her what was happening. She had decided to sleep in my bedroom for the night. We fell asleep around 10pm with the lights off. Again, as predicted, nearing 3 or 4am, we both wake up because my bedroom light had been turned on. She went back to her own room and left me to sleep alone in my room for the rest of the morning. I didn't turn off the light, I kept it on and hoped sleep would find me, but it never did. I stayed awake the entire night and was so stressed out I gave myself a migraine. I skipped college the next day because I had zero energy. When I left for a few weeks over Christmas, I felt extreme relief. Weirdly enough, nothing happened when I returned after Christmas. I still cannot explain everything that happened or what it could even have been. It opened my eyes to everything spooky. When I was moving out towards the end of the college year, I brought up everything that I experienced to my housemates. Turns out that one of them was staying in a room on the second floor and saw a full-body apparition of a lady standing at the end of her bed. Another had a guest stay over who saw another full-body apparition of a man walking in circles on the second floor hallway. Didn't realize it was a ghost and tried to have a conversation with it. Funny in hindsight, but not funny at the time. I always had a feeling of being chased any time I went up the stairs, resulting in me absolutely sprinting every time. As if my bedroom that I was sprinting to was any safer. I've since found out that I'm an empath. I don't know if this makes a difference. I've had plenty of creepy experiences since. If anyone has any insight into what they think this was, please let me know. 2. I work as an operator and shift manager at an incineration plant for chemical waste. Two years ago, I changed my company. Because at my previous company, there was an incident in which me and my crew nearly died, and the management pretty much said to me, you nearly died, so let's try to avoid it in the future. And they didn't come up with a new safety concept. Dicks. Back to the story. I changed my workplace, and now I operate an incineration plant again, But this one is much smaller. Pretty cool here, with a good work environment. The plant is part of an industry complex in a forest, and around the incineration plant 
is only forest except one of the production departments is our direct neighbor. A few months into the job, some of my co-workers told me that sometimes weird things happen in our department. What they meant is that sometimes you can hear footsteps near you or see a shadowy figure around a corner. That's interesting, right? Well, they had a pretty logical explanation for this. We not only use the incineration plant for chemical waste in forms of liquids like solvent, but we also burn away the toxic fumes that our other departments produce. So our direct neighbor has one production line in their basement, and the fumes this line produces are being sent through underground pipes through our basement into the plant to burn away. These fumes are not super dangerous, but at a high enough concentration they can cause hallucinations. But the pipes are pretty old, I think around 50 plus years, and they have seen better days. But because of the economy crisis in the last years, the management decided to pause repairing projects like old leaking pipes in our basements. So if you had the AC shut off for a longer period of time inside the basement, these fumes would concentrate and when you're at work, you might get hallucinations. They said that most of the weird stuff was probably caused by this. So now really, back to my experience. A month ago, I had a night shift, and my co-worker for the night was sick, so I was alone. 99.99% .99 of the night shifts, nothing happens, and you just make two inspection tours throughout the plant to get some data to see if there are issues. So I didn't think much about being alone, even when it was my first time alone in this company. I was even happy, because I planned to watch a movie. So, I was there in the night shift and made my first inspection tour. Nothing unusual until I needed to get some data from the basement. I went downstairs and walked to the sensors for the data. Suddenly, I heard a creaking sound from behind me and footsteps walking down the metal stairs. I turned around but didn't see a thing, of course. But I was a bit curious. Why? The stairs are very sturdy. One of my co-workers is pretty obese. Still a super nice guy. And when he walked down these stairs, they didn't make the same loud noise I heard just now. So whatever it was that made these sounds needed to be 370 plus pounds. I came to the conclusion that this must be the hallucinations made by the fumes. So I decided to continue my tour and then turn on the AC for later. But during this tour, I saw a shadowy figure at one corner, but still I thought, nah, just the fumes. Four hours later, I made my second and final inspection tour. Like before, everything normal. Then came the basement. I still shake a bit while remembering this. I walked down again, AC turned on, remember, so usually no fumes. And as I walked down, I can hear footsteps again directly behind me. I turned around, but nothing to see. I then continue to go to the sensors, and suddenly I hear footsteps again, but this time not walking, but running. I turn around in a flash, and I can see a shadow just in time as it goes around the corner. I was a bit shaken, but hurriedly collected the data, and wanted to go back and just leave the basement alone for tonight. As I walk upstairs again, I hear the charging footsteps again, but this time from two directions. One from behind and one from upstairs. I have enough and charge upstairs myself. As I reach the top of the stairs, I slightly turn around and only see a massive shadow halfway up the stairs. I run back to the control room and shut the door. And I remember, I had the AC turned on. That means there shouldn't be any fume concentration high enough to cause these kind of hallucinations. Shake, this time for real. I stand up and ponder if I should check the AC downstairs or wait it out. As I stand before the door to leave the control room, I hear footsteps behind the door. Quiet footsteps. But definitely footsteps. I made my decision to not be a hero and just wait for the next shift. Later, the next shift came, and I told them about my night shift. They first laughed it off, and said that probably the AC was bad again. I laughed with them, and even agreed, even though I didn't completely agree with the argument of a broken AC. The next two days, I had a weekend, and I forgot about it. Then, next Monday, I arrive early for my shift, and I chat a bit with the guys from the night shift. My experience comes up again, 
and I began to laugh like a few days ago. But my co-workers didn't. I asked them why. Well, well, well. As it turned out, the AC was completely fine. But what made my experience really, really scary was something else. Our neighboring department, which produces these fumes, wasn't running. Because of a lack of customers, they didn't have all the lines active for the year, and at my night shift, they had all production lanes turned off. That means they could never have produced these fumes, which means whatever I saw there wasn't hallucinations caused by the fumes, but something else. Whatever I saw and heard in that basement was real. No hallucinations, like many experienced all the time. No, I just had experienced something that scared everyone. My co-workers are now also cautious of the basement, and the manager of the incineration plant reported this to the higher-ups. They started an investigation about two weeks ago, but till now didn't find a logical cause for how these noises and shadows were created, and neither found a solution. They now plan to repair the pipes, ASAP, and in the next week, will install cameras and sensors to find out what is happening in the basement. 3. Hi everyone, I've got a few stories from my teen years I'd love to share. I recently moved to a city with paranormal history, so maybe I'll be able to add to this in the future. Experience number 1. A bit of background is required for this first encounter. When I was 10, my family moved into an older house, built around the 50s or 60s. It had an odd layout. From the entryway, you can enter the garage, a living room, a kitchenette, and the laundry area. One thing to note is that these were all located in a fairly small area, so from the garage, you could hear the front door opening and someone talking. Now for the story. When I was 14, I would take the bus home from school and have the house to myself for about an hour and a half while I waited for my mom to come home from work and my sister to come home from her classes. I had my routine, take the dogs out, do my chores, start homework, etc. This particular day I had to do the recycling which meant going into the garage. Now I never really liked the garage and would do anything I had to in there quickly then rush out of there. I went in and started to put the recycling in its designated container when I heard the door open, shut and a loud clear voice say, Hi, and then my name. And it was my sister's voice. Without looking up, thinking too much, I said, Oh, hey, I finished up, then walked into the entranceway and said, How was class? No answer. Again, I said, Hey, how was class? I walked around the house looking for her, and I looked at the time and realized my sister wouldn't be home for another 30 or 45 minutes. She hadn't come home, it was just me and my dogs. I said, look, I'm gonna go outside, and took my dogs into the backyard with me. Years later, I spoke to my stepbrother about that house, and without prompting, he said, oh yeah, that house was haunted. He said he felt watched almost 24-7 and had an odd feeling about certain areas of the house. I told my mom this story just last year, and she was stunned and immediately told my stepdad, who had a similar reaction. We all loved that house. I actually snapped a picture. That was what could have been an anomaly, but I'm skeptical of it. Experience 2. This one takes place six years ago on a trip to the city where I currently live. This city is filled with rich history, beautiful architecture, and is known as one of the most haunted cities in my province. Pretty much everyone who lives here for any period of time has a ghost story. On this particular trip, my mom and sister surprised me with a ghost walk of the city. I've always had a love for the paranormal, and I was thrilled. It was late at night, past closing for all the shops in the area. On one of the stops, we were standing in the loading area of a store, and the host was telling the story of one ghost, then swapped to another. As she began telling the story of the other ghost, what sounded like an open-palmed hand slammed the inside of the door. Everyone jumped, then nervously laughed. My mom denies hearing anything, but there was a pretty distinct reaction from everyone in the group. It very well could have been someone messing with us, but the host looked genuinely shocked and was speechless for a moment. Please let me know if you need any clarification or if you have any possible explanations. I've tried to debunk these, but I'm at a loss. I'm 22 now, 
and I still love to listen and learn about the paranormal. I even went to Zach Baggins Museum in Las Vegas. I 100% recommend. Much love, and stay safe out there. 4. It was early January 2011. Admission test results for the college I applied to were published in the college website. I topped the business faculty. To proceed with the enrollment formalities, we had to find our roll numbers in the bulletin board at the college premises and show it to the administrators. Yes, this was a weird requirement after online publication, but welcome to the third world, and on top of that, that was the very first year for online result publication, and trust over accuracy and authenticity of such results was low. Now back to the story. Each roll was an eight-digit figure, and results were published for more than a thousand successful candidates across all three faculties, science, arts, and business, listed in numerical sequence. There were more than 20 sheets of names on a big makeshift notice board created from a few regular-sized boards. My last three digits were 209, I found 207, and 211, and as far as I can recall, sheets 16 or 17. Logically, I expected my name between them, but it wasn't there. My pride in being the exam topper was gone as I stood there, dumbfounded, frantically searching through more than a dozen sheets for two hours in vain. I contacted the college authority, who simply said that online results were new and couldn't be trusted. If my name was missing from the bulletin board, then I was not selected in the test. Finding no other way, I turned back for home. I need to provide a bit of explanation about the environment at that time. After those two hours, almost all candidates had found their marks and already left. Even the administrators who had been sitting beside the bulletin board had gone back to their rooms. Only eight girls and three boys remained in the vicinity chatting among themselves. As soon as I turned around, I met a new girl standing directly opposite of me. More than a decade had passed, but I clearly remember our conversation. You didn't find your roll number? No. What's your name? What's your roll number? 209. Oh, I think I saw your number in the first sheet. Without saying anything, I turned around and finally found it in the very first sheet. The trick was the college authority had listed the names of all three toppers in a separate table on the first sheet. Afterwards, followed by the sequence of successful science, arts, and finally business candidates lists. I had no idea that this could happen, and I had not checked it at all. I was relieved and turned around to thank her. From my turning towards the bulletin board, finding the result, and turning back, it took ten seconds at best, and within this time she was gone, totally vanished. Those other girls and boys were still there. None of them were wearing the pink and maroon-colored dress the girl who helped me had been wearing. I can't remember clearly anymore. Now to discuss the geography of my college and bulletin board, the college was situated on the top of a small hill. A ten meters to the left of the bulletin board were the buildings of the arts faculty. Going towards that direction would have been directly within my peripheral vision. B behind the bulletin board was the sixty or seventy meter steep climb towards the business faculty, located on top of a larger hill. Impossible for any human to cross that in such a short time. That, too, not being noticed by me, and the path was totally open. See, five to six meters to the right was the science faculty and administration where the girls and boys were chatting. Someone could hide there only behind the hallway walls, since the classroom doors were all closed. D, behind me, was the steep decline towards the entrance of the college gate. It could be crossed within ten seconds by running. Now where did she go? Why would she run towards the gate or hide behind the walls? Why would she memorize an eight-digit number for no reason? Which even I couldn't remember without the help of the registration card. For the first two or three days, nothing happened. I could remember very well. I did not tell anyone about the incident. Then one day, I decided to tell my parents about it, and immediately from that moment, I could not describe how she looked. Forever forgot how she looked like. Five. I had an experience with what I believe was a dryad, a nature spirit. Could be many things, as there are many different names and versions of nature spirits. 
Like my water spirit encounter, this one had also happened when I was young, and happened somewhere in the northern areas of Minnesota. When I was younger, my family was a lot more outdoorsy, and every summer my dad would take me and my biological brother, I have four brothers, only one of which shares the same dad as me, camping with his side of the family, and my mom would bring us all up to our great uncle's cabin. This experience happened at the cabin. We were up at my great uncle's cabin and were staying up there for around two weeks. Because it was a more remote location, and because the times were very different back then, we didn't really have to fear anything, or other people, so we were often allowed to just run around by ourselves and explore. The third day we were up there, a few of my brothers went swimming, and I decided to just explore the forest around us. I've never been great with math, so I couldn't really say how far I went, but I was pretty far from the cabin, and all that was around me was trees. After what felt like 30, 40-ish minutes of just walking, exploring, I came upon this really pretty clearing in the woods, circular in nature. A rather large rock was in the center of this lush clearing, covered with dark green moss. A few wooden logs were in the clearing as well. Also moss-covered, and there were varying flowers, and I think even a few berry bushes as well, but I don't know much about plants, so it might have just been bushes that looked like they had berries. Anyways, I remember finding the location to be really beautiful and serene. I walked out in the center of it, near the rock, and sat atop one of the logs and just let the world melt away, and enjoyed the sounds, smells, and comforting embrace of the natural world. I basically wound up meditating in that spot for a while, just enjoying the precious moment for a while before wanting to climb up on the rock. As you can assume, a moss-covered rock, especially one as large as it was, isn't the easiest thing to climb on, and have a good grip while doing so. But after a while, I finally managed to get on top of it. For a brief moment, at least before my footing slipped and I slammed down to the ground, with a loud thud, a very audible snapping sound came from my arm, and I remember screaming in pain. Not long after I started screaming, I heard a really soft and calmly toned voice of a woman, and noticed a woman sitting atop one of the logs. She had long, dark brown hair, similar to mine. Her skin was really tanned. Her eyes were as green and bright as the leaves and plants around us. Also topless, but her bottom half was covered in a skirt-like clothing that looked like it was made of leaves and flowers. I don't remember what she said, but I remember it had instantly made me stop screaming and had me feeling really calm. She walked over to me and grabbed some moss from the rock and took my arm and placed the moss on the part of my arm that was experiencing pain. And I remember her begin to mutter things. But I didn't really make anything out of it, as it sounded like a gentle wind to me. I remember a warm sensation coming from the moss and spreading over my arm, dulling the pain until it was basically non-existent. Then she took out a circular piece of bark, basically as if someone had fashioned tree bark into a cup. It was filled with water and she made me drink it. The flavor I remember being a very bitter, earthy, tea-like flavor. Once she had seen that I wasn't in pain anymore, she stood up, gave me a cheery smile before placing a few fingers under my chin and lifted my head slightly and stared into my eyes, before smiling again and placing a kiss on my forehead, and then turned and just started walking towards a tree and vanished into it. While I did try to describe her as best as I could, her appearance was etheric in nature, perfect and beautiful. Her touch was soft and warming, her hair was long, practically down to just below her butt. She was tall, obviously, as a child every adult was going to be tall, but I say she was probably around the seven-foot range. She smelled like the tea tasted, earthy, flowery, and kind of like rain in damp leaves. That's not the only experience I had with her, but it was the closest experience with her. As in being physically close. But there were several times the rest of the week where I'd be swimming and she would be standing at the tree line around the cabin watching me. Or we'd be in the car driving to go back into the nearest town or a shopping place to get food or something for the cabin. And I'd see her in the woods, dancing or just smiling and waving at me. She made such an impression on me that one of my OCs and D&D &D characters is a druid based entirely off of her. 
Figured I'd share this experience to show people that not everything regarding the paranormal and unknown is scary, or things to be scared of. Hey everybody, Halfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Paranormal Stories, episode 396. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Before you go, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already, please. Okay, no other business today, so let's move along to Halfreezer's question of the day. Uh, today's question is... Weird encounters with people coming to your home. I just had one. Uh, the piping, uh, the plumbing outside the house, the drains, is not very good in my house. They would need to replace it, really. And so occasionally I will have to call to have them come in with their special fancy equipment like and, and clean it out with, you know, um, with water pressure and such. Uh, the water jets. But it's been fine lately. It's been a good few months since I've had any problems with it. But I was sitting on the sofa, taking a little break from work, and then just psyching myself up to go back upstairs and begin recording again. When someone... It's 6 p.m., so I'm not expecting anyone at the door. Suddenly. What the hell? I go to the door. And this guy was eager because he came around and knocked on my window. Because I guess I didn't get to the door quick enough for him. Good thing I had thrown my robe on. I wasn't naked, I just didn't have a shirt on at the time. So I threw my robe on, went to the door. And is it uh, your problem, problem with your drains? No. So I said, look, mate, there's no problem with them, but if you want, this is how you get access to go and check. And I don't know if there was a problem that maybe a neighbour reported. But usually the neighbour would give me a knock and let me know there was an issue. Or if he just figured I'm here now, I may as well just do the job because I'm getting paid for it. Because uh, he spent quite a bit of time clearing the drains out, which didn't really need clearing out as far as I know. So that was a very weird experience for me tonight. Well, it's been a weird time of it in general lately, but that was a weird experience for me. So why don't you share some of yours in a comment below. And before we go, let's take a look at the answer of the day from a previous video. And this one comes from Paranormal Stories 394 and it was about the weirdest email you've ever got. Because uh, I think I had had one that day, the day I came up with that question. And today's answer comes from... Dust Warden. I got an invite from a tenant in the building I work in to connect to some business networking site I can't remember the name of, not LinkedIn. It's weird because my job is pretty far from owning or managing a business and has nothing to do with her particular business, which is a yoga studio. We're just in the same building. I can't conceive of a reason why I should want to refer clients to me. I don't have clients. Thank you very much for your answer, Dust Warden. With that... I'm going to head off for now, so until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.